this, my friends, is what you shouldn't wait until the last minute to do a book haul. Strap yourselves in people. We got one hell of a book haul. Not only do I have all the books that I bought in London and all the bookish merchandise I bought in London, but I also let a lot of books pile up at home that I never haul. And we're gonna haul them now. So we got 30 plus books and it's gonna be madness. Like there's so much stuff. This is gonna be a hell of a video. Um, a couple updates. Back at home, got my shelves. I miss them so much, like, I just missed having these guys. Another thing, wearing my old glasses. You might recognize them if you've been on my channel for a while. These are my old glasses. My current glasses broke, so I will be replacing them soon. Without further ado, let's get into the book. I'm gonna be first showing some old books that I bought during Christmas, then we'll be going into the London books. One of the books I bought myself over Christmas time was Greek Gods. This is by Rick Riordan. It's kind of like this guide to all the Greek gods, but it's told by Percy Jackson, so it's hilarious. I read the Greek Heroes one by him, and so I gotta read this one this summer. I also bought the Magnus Chase Hotel Van Hala Guide to the Norse World. This is just a quick easy guide about the Norse gods and different things that you might encounter in the series. This is one of my favorite series by Rick Riordan, so I definitely enjoyed this. The next thing I bought was the manga classic version of Jane Eyre. I love these manga classics. I've read The Pride and Prejudice and really enjoyed it. When I heard they were coming out with a Jane Eyre, I got super excited. It was one of my most anticipated books of last year. I've already read it. I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't perfect for me. But they definitely did a better job than the graphic novel version of Jane Eyre, which is more like a thing that helps students in school kind of a thing. The three books I also didn't get to haul was the Lunar Chronicles. I did haul the last book in the novella, but I never got to haul these three. I didn't do it, and now I'm paying for it because I have to do all of them now. This is a sci-fi adventure with a fairy tale retelling element to it. I really enjoyed them. These are the first three books in the series. We have Cinder, Scarlet, and Cress. I've already read the whole entire series and talked about it on my channel, so let's get into some of the books I bought in between school and my study abroad programs. I can't not buy books. One of the books I bought was The Trials of Apollo. This is the Dark Prophecy book two in another Rick Riordan series. This follows Greek gods and this one specifically follows the Greek god Apollo as our main character who's been turned into a teenage boy. As you can tell, it's very funny, action-packed. Another really great series by Rick. Another book I bought was The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. This is Becky Albertalli's newest book. She also wrote Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which I also enjoy. I talked about this in one of my wrap-ups. Basically contemporary with a lot of really great diverse representation. It's just a solid, really fun story. Another book I bought was A Silent Voice 2. This is the second volume in a seven book manga series. I'm really enjoying this series so far. It's about a bully and the person he bullied who was deaf. Now they're coming together um, much later in life and kind of talking it out and becoming friends. It's really sweet, but it's also really complicated. It has a lot of depth to it and I really enjoy it and I can't wait to read the rest of this. One of the last books I bought at school was Lincoln and the Bardo. This is by George Saunders. George Saunders actually sometimes works at my school and so the bookstore was selling it like 30% off so I'm like this is the best chance to buy this. Another great thing about an author working out on your campus is that he signs the books that are in the bookstore. All the books were signed and it was just fantastic so I got this 30% off and I got a signature. I've read some of his short stories and really enjoyed them. They're really weird, so I'm really looking forward to this. Now this follows like Lincoln's son and something to do with death. I'm not really sure though. It's going to be really interesting and weird and I'm really excited for it. Definitely going to be on the more magical realism side, but it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Until I left for my study abroad program, I actually stayed with my aunt and uncle and they had this really great secondhand bookstore, so I decided to check it out. I got some really good books for some really good prices. One of the books I bought was The School for Good and Evil. This is by Simon Chinini. Um, unfortunately, it is a little bit ripped, but you know, I was looking for that cheap price, especially since I haven't really been enjoying this series. I also bought Since You've Been Gone. This is by Morgan Madison. I've read a Morgan Madison book in the past, and I was kind of eh about it. I thought it was really well done and good, but I just didn't think it was for me. So I'm hoping that this book that centers around a more shy character will kind of be more my thing. So this follows a girl and her best friend goes missing and leaves her with this list of things to do over summer. So I think it is going to be a lot of family and friend focus, but I think you know, romance will be a part of it, which I'm looking forward to. I also got Where the Moon Meets the Mountain. This is a children's novel, and I don't know much about it other than I'm pretty sure it's Chinese folklore 
or some type of retelling of Chinese folklore, something about that. There's just some books that you always see and display at the library or at school and stuff, and like this is a book I've always kind of seen around, but I've never read it, so I thought I would give it a try. And then I also bought The Westing Game. This is by Ellen Braskin, I believe how you pronounce it. This is another book that I always saw kids reading for school, but for whatever reason, I just never had to read it. This is also the winner of the Newbery Award. Even though I've been home for like two, three days, of course I've already gone to the bookstore. And I got Akazuki no Yona, or Yona of the Dawn, Volume 6. If you watch my channel, this is not a surprise. I hunted down for this in London so many times. Did not have it. I was so mad. Every time I would go, they would have 1 through 5, or 1, 2, and 3, and then they wouldn't have Volume 6. Somebody already bought it, and I'm just like, London, restock your shelves. I need this. Anyway, I will talk about this in my wrap-up because you know I've already read it and I will be doing another discussion review talk on this series because it is my favorite thing to do. The next thing I have is the last thing I'm going to be hauling for like part one, which is the books I didn't buy in London. For Christmas, I also got one of the only book things I got was the Harry Potter series in the beautiful Bloomsbury new edition. Oh, I've been wanting this for so long long. I saw it at Target when I was going Christmas shopping. I'm like, Mom, did you buy this for me? I asked for it for Christmas. And she's like, oh no, I didn't buy it for you. So I literally just took this and put it in my cart and bought it myself for Christmas. And I think it was um, 30 or 50% off. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy it now and it's at Costco and it's cheap. So this is the beautiful new editions that I feel like everybody has. They're so pretty. And it makes the castle on the spines and oh, I just... I really like these ones. They're so pretty. Look how cute the back is. Oh, this box is amazing. I do have a couple videos to show of London and I will be making and uploading those in the future, but for now let's just talk about the books I bought in London. I went to this really cool bookstore called Dawn Books. So one of the books I ended up buying was this little tiny one year old penguin edition of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. She did the wa yellow wallpaper, which this is. It also has a couple more short stories that I haven't read that I'm really excited to try out. These are so cute and it was super cheap, so I'm like, gotta get it. And then another book I bought at Dawn was Anna Green Gables. This is the first book in the Anna Green Gables series. Basically, I watched the new Anne with an E series on Netflix and I really enjoyed it. I know that's controversial. I will talk about that later. So I picked up the first book and read it and I will talk about it because I did really enjoy it. And so I picked up Silent Voice Volume 3. This is the same series that I talked about earlier. I read it. I will talk about it in my wrap up. I also bought a new edition of Howl's Moving Castle because this is the book I want to read when I'm not feeling super great. I finally wrote a review for this book because I just reread it. This is by Diane Wayne Jones and I love this book so much. Just, it's one of my favorites. It's one I reread. I love the movie. I love this. I've talked about this book a lot recently in some of my videos but I can't help it. And then another book I bought was Geekerella by Ashley Poston. This was a book explosion book of the month a couple of months ago. And I just saw it and I was like, hey, I need a cute fluffy read. That's what I need right now. Cinderella story, but with nerd and fandom culture wrapped in there. And this one was signed at the bookstore. Like, ugh, I couldn't resist. So I will be talking about this in my wrap up again. I really enjoyed this and it was a lot of fun. Basically, L Cinderella story, blah, blah, blah. But she's really into fandom of this one kind of Star Trek-y series, I would say, only it's a little more underground than Star Trek. And this actor that she does not like is going to be cast as her, like, favorite character of all time. And she's like, um, excuse me, no, he's going to be horrible. And then, of course, they somehow end up secretly texting each other, but they don't know who each other is. And, you know, chaos ensues from there. There's just one book that always, no matter what, will make me feel better. And that is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone. Especially since I have the UK edition, I got the Philosopher's Stone. Yes, I don't think I've seen any booktuber haul this yet because I think it's only out in London and maybe Australia. So all you Americans, ha, I have it. I'm so excited. This is the 20th anniversary edition that comes in the Hogwarts houses. I kind of want to collect them all. But I started with Gryffindor because that is my house. People tell me all the time I'm a Ravenclaw or Slytherin. I'm starting to get Slytherin a lot and I definitely feel connected with the house somehow, but I've always been Gryffindor and I always will be. This is the 20th anniversary edition. It is so beautiful. I love the spine. It comes with a lot of bonus content and bonus illustrations that talk about your house in particular and just about the series. 
and it's wonderful. I was doing a London theater program, so I was watching a lot of different plays and musicals. One of the great thing about Foils, which is my favorite London bookstore, is that they have a huge theater section. At Foils, they have this display section that had, hey, here's all the plays that are going on right now, and here's some of the playbooks. Come and pick us up and read them. And I was like, you know what? I will read you. So one of my favorite plays that I saw was An Octoroon by Brandon Jacobs Jenning. Ugh, that's a mouthful of a name, but I kind of love it. I don't know how to describe this play because it is so out there and I, but it's so good. Like I loved this production. I love the script. I'll be talking about it in my wrap up because I did read it. I was really excited that you can buy the actual production poster with the, you know, with the text. So it's the original play, but it kind of has little things you know, to do with the production you saw, which I thought made it really special. I saw two productions at the Globe, so I had to pick something up from there. So I bought Othello because I had to read it for class. Yes, Othello is one of Shakespeare's most complicated and also one of his most well-known plays, I feel like. Some people think it's racist, some people think it's like kind of opposing race. Whatever you believe, it is a famous Shakespeare play. It is really complicated and really interesting. The thing you should know going into it though, it's tragedy, so there's death and murder and destruction. Yes. <laughs> Another book I bought was Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetti, but actually I didn't buy this. My mom did. My mom needed a book to read on the plane and I tricked her into buying one of the books I wanted to read so that when she's done with this I can have it. And I also really like this British edition. It's really pretty, although the original US hardback is also very pretty. I'm not really sure this is what this is about. I'm pretty sure it's during World War II somewhere. There's a lot of hype about this on booktube and a lot of people really enjoyed it. We'll find out more about it soon. Because I was in England, I also had to buy Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I've never read a Lainey Taylor book. I've been hearing a lot of mixed things about this one and this is her newest book that's out. It has something to do with this city called Weep and it follows a librarian, I think, and they go on like this mystery thing. It's supposed to be really weird and out there and have like really gorgeous writing. I've been kind of on the fence about reading Lainey Taylor, especially I don't want to pick up new series right now because I kind of want to finish the ones I've already started. But I really, really love this edition and I knew I wasn't going to get a chance to buy this in the US. I just really like this cover, so I'm like, hey, give it a try, see what happens. The next thing I bought was the entire Miss Bourne series in the beautiful British editions. I had to buy them like this because I love them so much. They're so gorgeous. This is the first book, Miss Bourne, which I've read and will talk about in my wrap up, The Well of Ascension. And the third book, Hero of Ages, all by Brandon Sanderson. It's gorgeous. It's the one everybody has on book two because the American editions are hella ugly. But that does not change that this story is so amazing. I just read the first book and I, I'm i in love. I love it so much. Like, I can't wait to read the rest of the series. And finally, the last book I bought on my trip to London was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone again. Yes, I bought two editions. This is the new Bloomsbury UK edition. I love these new editions. They're really, really cute. But the reason I had to get it was because on the studio tour, they put these little stamps on them and it says that you went on the studio tour. So it was just a nice souvenir to wrap everything up. And I just love it so much. So now we're gonna look at the bookish merchandise I bought in London. Yes, we made it through all the books. So if you don't wanna hear about the crap that I bought, then this video is over for you. Thanks for watching. First, I'll be showing some of the bookmarks I bought. Some of them come free with the books, so that's amazing. At Dawn Books, which was one of my favorite bookstores, I got this little bookmark. Um, it just has like the storefront on it and a little bit about the store on the back. It's just really cute and I really liked it. My aunt actually bought these next ones for me and she forgot to give them to me for Christmas, so I got them when I was there. They are th little ones. I think they're from Target. They're the Harry Potter characters. You got Harry, Hermione, Ron, and Draco, and they're just really cute. When I was at Harry Potter Studio Tour, I knew I had to get some bookmarks because you gotta have some. They actually gave this one free, which, ha which has the new 20th anniversary editions. I almost said 50. It's not 50 years old yet, Courtney. You're not that old. For Ryan, I got a Slytherin book art. I just thought it was really cute. I haven't taken it out of the paper yet, but it's got Slytherin, it's got the colors, got all you need. And for myself, I bought a Gryffindor one. 
has the little lion at the top. I just thought it was really cute and they were really nice like quality so that's why I got it. So I've always wanted the set but I saw this one and it was reasonably priced so I decided to get the Gryffindor one. I just really like these bookmarks. They're really nice. I have some other bookish items to show from the Harry Potter studio tour but honestly I wish I had bought more. Like I wish I just would have gone crazy and bought like a time turner or the philosopher's stone or like the sword of Gryffindor. That's what I really want is the sword. I also bought some bookish clothes. I don't really have a lot of bookish clothes and if I do I normally wear them at night. I don't really wear them like around. But one of the things I saw was this nightshirt at this store called Primark. It's kind of like their Forever 21. It's this Alice in Wonderland print and it's just really cute. I'm probably just going to use this as a nightshirt because it was in the sleep section. It says Lost in Wonderland and I just really like this print. I thought it was really cute and pretty. Primark just has really good prices. It's really cheap. And I also bought these um, Gryffindor socks with little ruffles on top. They're just really cute and fun. I also bought this sleep shirt from Primark which is a Quidditch team shirt. It is the, I think it's supposed to be Gryffindor Quidditch team, but it doesn't specify. As you can see, it's like a long nightgown thing, and it's just, it's really comfy. So another thing I bought for my good friend Ryan is this um, Harry Potter shirt. It's kind of oversized, so it should be super comfy and just nice to wear around. The reason why I got it is because I've never seen this quote on a shirt before, and I just thought it was fantastic. It's a Molly Weasley quote. I just never saw this quote on a shirt before, and I thought it was so funny, and typography is amazing and beautiful. So I hope Ryan likes that. My last Harry Potter shirt that I bought there, um, also at Primark, this Fantastic Beast night shirt. It has the Niffler on it with, like, little description-y stuff, and I just thought it was super cute and fun, and it's really comfy. I wore this on the plane. I also bought a Hogwarts crest, um, tree ornament because I need more Hogwarts tree ornaments for my tree. I do, I do, I do. It's also something I got on the studio tour. I also got a butterbeer cup when I was at the studio tour. You get this when you get the butterbeer ice cream. Unfortunately, I'm not a big butterscotch person, so I didn't really love the ice cream, but the cup was cute, so I just wanted the cup. This is the mug I bought for Ryan. I believe it's Fantastic Bees because it kind of has that 20s feel for it just like a witch coffee mug and I just thought it was really cute. And then for myself, I got the classic um, Hogwarts school mug. It says Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry on it. It's really shiny, it's got the crest. I just, I like this mug and I'm gonna use it at school. And not on purpose, we just ended up being in all these places that are Harry Potter. Edinburgh is actually the place where JK Rowling currently lives. It's where she started writing Harry Potter and there's this little cafe which is called the Elephant House where she actually wrote a lot of the chapters for the book series. So they got pictures up there and I ate in there and you can buy these little pins that have the elephant house logo on them and it says the birthplace of Harry Potter, which isn't exactly true, but I still bought the pins so they're selling their merchandise well. Another thing I wanted to buy was these like bookish tote bags. I've always wanted a couple tote bags to like put groceries and books in and different things. I had to get some while I was in London. One of my favorite stores was Foils Bookstore, which is just a big chain bookstore, so I bought a Foils one with this nice bookish print on it. And I also bought a Waterstone one, which is another big chain bookstore in London. I just really liked the little bookshelf print on it. I thought it was nice. And they're good souvenirs. Okay, almost done, people. Almost done. The other things I bought were these poster things. Pretty sure the person just ripped them off the internet and printed them out because the resolution is a little bit fuzzy, but they are stunning. So you got three of these for $15, and I got the Harry Potter prints, of course. So I had Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban cup, the Order of the Phoenix, and the Goblet of Fire. I just wanted to get ones in order. I should have bought the whole set. Those are the ones I got because I really did like um, kind of the look of them. And they all go together really nicely, and it's just a nice look to it, but... Yeah, I kind of want them all now, I'm not gonna lie. Okay guys, thank you for staying with me if you stayed through that whole thing. That was all the books and the bookish merchandise I bought in London and before London because I needed to do this book haul a long time ago. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys with another one soon. Hopefully not another haul anytime soon, if I can help it. I'll see you guys later and keep it classy.